Hi there, it's Denise Eckert from the Relaxation Lounge. And I love coming on here to share different techniques to help you lower the stress in your life. And today I've got Rachel Stravelli, and she's a growth coach. She helps creative women drop the shoulds, speak their truth, and grow sustainably. She supports women to move through the world as beautiful, unique expression of life that they are. So welcome, Rachel. Thank you, Denise. I'm so happy to be here. Now, how, what brought you to coaching? So I understand you used to be a teacher, actually. Mm-hmm. Yes. So I was a teacher on and off for a number of years. And then when I was planning to have a family, I thought, oh, I'm going to be a homesteader and craft and just stay at home with my baby and it's going to be great. And it wasn't really what I thought it was going to be. Within a few months, I was getting really bored yeah, I, I was going on tons of mom play dates and doing all these things, but I still just felt like this isn't what I thought it would be. And so then I started freelancing and also from my background in agriculture, people were always asking me about their gardens. And, and when all this time that I had on my hands with the baby, when she was napping or when I was going around thinking, I thought, well, maybe, maybe a garden coach is a business I could do. Like, I know I have the knowledge. And so I started doing that on the side. And over time, I realized some people wanted me to help them grow in other ways. And I also felt a calling from my days of when I had been teaching English and science and social studies to just nurture the potential in others and to help them grow. So after about three years of being a garden coach. I started doing life coaching and spiritual coaching as well. And now I do more of that than of the garden coaching. Although in the springtime, definitely people always want to talk about gardens with me. And I found that I, I created this online program called Nourish Your Soul with Nature. And some of it I'm going to talk about here with you today uh, of the ideas of it, because I find even if we're not a gardener or super, super into nature as like, I love to go hiking or biking or canoeing or whatever outdoors, there's still something that anyone can gain from having time connecting with nature and with the natural world, even if it's just five minutes a day. So I really like to encourage that in other people. Well, I know for myself, when I feel stressed out, I hop out into the garden and I don't have a huge garden. I mean, I used to in the past and mm -hmm. I found that a little overwhelming because, you know, you go out and then all of a sudden now it's like overwhelmed with weeds. So now I keep mm -hmm. it to the point where it's manageable, but yeah. give us your tips on, you know, if you are feeling stressed out, what are the tips that you offer your audience? Yes, yes. Well, and already you brought up something which is so important and I've had this happen with me too. So at different points in your life, your relationship with your yard or a garden or nature is gonna look different. I used to have a huge garden that pretty much took over the whole yard. But then with my second child who is a real <laughs> handful to put it in the mildest way <laughs> I I just couldn't manage him and the garden it was too much work and too much chaos so and he loves to pull things out of the garden so now I have three small garden beds and even though I consider myself a massive gardener that's where I am at this stage in my life and, and my way of connecting with nature five years from now or 15 years might look different than it does right now. And that's okay. And so I think, and, I, and I've met people who try out veggie gardening and they're like, oh, this is not for me. But they love growing plants that attract birds to their yard or flowers that they can cut and put on the kitchen table or in their bathroom. And so I think the most important thing is to remember how you feel about being outside and your own natural inclination. Go with that and just try and add to it, add a little bit more. So if you think, okay, I really love flowers and herbs. Well, maybe you grow some, or maybe you just say, I'm going to make a point to buy fresh herbs from the market every week so that 
I can have them on my salad. Some people put them in a little glass of water on their counter so they see the herbs, you know, as they're coming and going, filling up your coffee and getting your water if you're working from home. Um, so finding little ways of, of honoring your own interests and needs and, and working with that. So that's, that's one thing. Another thing, so first I'll, I'll address like if you're working from home and then if you don't work from home. So what I find is it really helps me if I'm working from home to once or twice during the day, pop out on my back porch and just take a deep breath, look at the sky. Is there anybody at the bird feeder? Like check out what's going on and give myself a break from the intense work because most of us, like if we just plow through, we there's this idea that you'll get more done, but actually your, your reserves get low and you're more likely to be burnt out. Whereas just a few minute break, if you can step outside or go to a window and look at some trees, studies show that makes you feel happier and makes you feel more revitalized. It can make you more creative too. So like if you have something that takes a lot of mental power, taking that break to move around and not just look straight in front of you at your computer or your device or whatever it is that you're doing, we get very used to almost like tunnel vision of looking in one direction. But when you're outside, you're more likely to see something out of the corner of your eye and glance and look over. Um, and if it's cold this time of year when you're listening, and you don't want to go outside, even just going to a window, you're still going to be getting some of that, that energizing experience of it. And then if you work outside of the home, one of the things that I like to do, whether I'm commuting in my car or public transit, is I always like to see what the sky's like today. Are there clouds? How are they drifting? I mean, to me, there's something about clouds that are so relaxing that just, and I sometimes picture that I'm floating along with it too. And that's one of my ways of checking in and, and being really present in the moment because almost every day, the sky can be different where you live. Um, I mean, I know some parts of the world, it's rainy all the time or sunny almost all the time, but a lot of us live in these climates where there is variation. And so checking out the clouds and noticing is there wind and I always like to try uh, on my various drives so I, I drive my youngest to preschool I try and notice when I'm going there and coming back can I notice anything different about my environment today and and I'm typically some of the time I listen to podcasts when I'm driving some of the time I don't but regardless I'm always looking around to see oh my neighbor put tulips out in their yard or the trees are starting to leaf out. And these little things uh, help me feel more tuned into my environment. And it's also relaxing and it doesn't keep me fixated on what has so-and-so celebrity done this week? What's happening in Congress or parliament or wherever? Like, not that it's bad if you like to think about those things, but they're not actually usually relaxing for us. No, exactly. With the things that are going on in the world, it's very, very, very negative. And mm -hmm. I love that. Like, even if you're in a place, it doesn't really matter where you are. The sky is still available. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And it's so funny because it doesn't cost anything to tell yourself every time I get in the car, I'm going to look at the sky and see what I see. There's this barn that's about a half a mile down the road. And some of the time turkey vultures are on top of the barn and some of the time they're not. So it's like a little game I play with myself every day. Are they going to be there? How many are going to be there? Are they going to be out there? Sometimes they outstretch their wings and they're all sitting out there with their wings folded open. It, I can't really describe it, but the first time I saw it, I thought there was some weird sculpture on top of the, the barn roof. Uh, and sometimes they're just sitting there. I think when they outstretch their wings, maybe they're, I don't know, trying to get more circulation. He, I don't know what they're trying to do. But e either way, it's, it's one of the little games I play to just keep things interesting and to keep me tuned into what's 
going on and noticing my surroundings. And it keeps, uh, again, you, you mentioned, and I had talked about too, like there's a lot of negative news out there. And also people's brains tend to a little bit lean towards the negative. It's just the way we're wired because for so much of human existence, we had to hone in and tune into the negative to make sure that we survived. And, you know, there is a time and a place for that, but we have anywhere from 20,000 to 60,000 thoughts a day. If they're all negative, we're going to be feel, feeling pretty bad. Whereas if I can have 20 thoughts about are the turkey vultures out today, you know, and five thoughts about the clouds and five thoughts about how does this radish in my salad taste and, you know, all the different ways that I can really tune into my senses and feel alive. Then by the end of the day, I've had these little moments of good sensory experiences that are also making my body feel like I'm in a safe place, I can relax, things are good, all of that. And it's funny because a lot of times I talk about chunking things down. You mm. know, if you've got a big project, you chunk it down into smaller bite-sized pieces. And then after each piece, <laughs> take that break. And yeah. one of the things I find when I'm talking to women is like they feel overwhelmed on taking a break. But, mm. you know, as you say, you just go to the window for five minutes mm -hmm. and, you know, get into that alignment, which is very important. Yes. Yes. And I agree. And it's sometimes like maybe some people are thinking, I don't have five minutes. I really only have one minute. Well, walk to the window. <laughs> That's 10 or 20 seconds. Stand there for 20 seconds and walk back. I, I know it's not everything, but every little thing that you can do to to kind of break the pattern of I'm overwhelmed, everything is hard, Ugh, life is so overwhelming and too much, anything you can do to break that pattern and give a little bit back to yourself, the better that off that you can be. And you can't get any simpler that than that. Walk yes. to the window, <laughs> look out. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny when um, when I'm home with my kids a lot, or like when when the pandemic happened and the lockdown was going on uh, in in a major way. Being outside was one of the only things that was a break for me because we were all together all the time and there were a lot of emotions and, and all of that going on was getting to be too much for me sometimes. So I would just lay on my back porch and stare up at the sky and take deep breaths. And I look at the trees and I say, okay, they got through this. I will get through this too. And um, that, that's one of the other things I like to do. So if you want to add on to this first idea we talked about, which is just take a break and make it as simple and easy as it can be to put your attention on the sky or on the trees. Um, the, the next thing that I really like to do is, as I'm looking around at the trees, I really try and think about uh, it, it might sound a little bit silly, but like, what would a tree do in my situation? Or would they be reacting this way? And okay, they don't have all the same issues and drama that we do, but, but there's something about the stability of the trees that when I see it, I just think these are old creatures, anywhere from 10 to 100 years old, depending on how big it is. And, and I think, okay, they get through storms, they don't have any coats. <laughs> they they get through it all and they just keep on showing up every day. And it really inspires me to think, okay, I can show up every day and feel peaceful. And, and it's almost like I borrow some of the strength and resilience from the natural world and, and imagine that it's within me too. Yeah. Now, someone, since you're the gardening expert, for someone that's just yeah. starting out with gardening, mm -hmm. what would you recommend? It's funny because today I was doing a hypnotherapy session and I got to the point of relaxing and all I could think of was garden because mm. my, my situation here is I, I have a little flat and mm -hmm. I had two giant trees out front. And so I was always gardening for shade. 
So I had the hostas and all, you know, yes. the shade plants. Well, both trees are now gone. So I'm like, yes, I can actually plant some veggies and I can plant this now and plant that. Yes. So all of a sudden now it's like, you know, I, I would like to make myself just a little square box put in, you know, minimal because I don't, mm -hmm. I'm, I don't need 30 bushels of tomatoes. I just want the odd one here and there. Yes. What would you recommend on someone getting started? Yes. Excellent. And, um, and I also, I can maybe share with you, I have a free 30 minute course that goes over the basics, but I'll get, I'll give you a few of the highlights from that. So I, I like what you're saying already. And this is one of the things that I say too, which is start small. Even if you think you want to do more, it's always easier to start with less because if, your plants do really well and you have a lot of produce, all of a sudden you have to do something with that produce. You, you have to eat it or preserve it in one way or another. And so maybe a box that's three feet by three feet or a yard by yard or four by four, or sometimes people just start with one or two herb pots. Uh, however, whatever feels like a comfortable small level, I think starting small is great. And then, I also recommend starting with just a few different types of plants. So instead of saying, I'm gonna grow strawberries, tomatoes, carrots, peppers, watermelon, lettuce, green beans, and Brussels sprouts, whoa. One, you need a lot of space for all that. And two, like they all have different needs. Plants are just, think of them like pets, you know, they're, they're like plant pets. Each pet has a different personality and different needs and plants are the same way. So tomatoes have different needs than carrots do. And if you're just starting out and you've never grown anything, that's a lot to learn about each plant. And so I would say pick two or three to, to hone in on. And then as you start to get more comfortable, then you can add more in because for example, depending on what your growing season is, if it's if it's four to six months, there are plants that grow really fast. So you could put in the plants that grow, that need most of the season to grow, like either a tomato or a pepper or a squash, but then things like peas or green beans or lettuce or radishes grow relatively quickly. So once you've got your other plants established and you feel like, okay, I'm, I'm starting to get better at this, you could add one of the other plants that grows a little bit more quickly. Or you could just stick with, I'm gonna do two tomatoes and one basil. And that's probably enough for most people to give you some salads and sandwiches and things like that. And the other thing I will say about starting a garden is, it's this might seem obvious, but what are the foods that you really like that you also really like to eat fresh. So for example, I love fresh tomatoes. I don't think tomatoes from the grocery store taste that great. So even if, if I only have one bed, I will still um, almost always grow a tomato. I'm trying to think, I think I've grown tomatoes every single year that I've had a garden. And even when I only had a patio, I grew them in pots on my patio, uh, just because I love the taste of fresh tomatoes that much. And, and so a, a great thing to think about is what do I really either like to eat a lot of, or do I like really fresh and it would be great to have it, you know, in salad or in a stir fry or some other meal two to three times a week. Cause that'll give you a clue of the type of herb or vegetable that you might want to grow. Well, you know what, you sparked something in me because I am a, I love fresh tomatoes as well. And because I'm in a little bit of a colder climate for us, it mm -hmm. takes a long time for our tomatoes to become ripe. So I always yes. do the cherry tomatoes. But one of my favorite is bruschetta. Oh, you know, yeah. Fresh basil and fresh tomatoes, a little bit of garlic. Yum. Yes, <laughs> I love that. And also, you made me think of another thing, especially for people just starting out. When it's our frost free period, which is different for every person depending on where you live. So you can either Google it with your zip code or ask someone you know that gardens or just pay attention to the weather. But when you're in the period where we don't have frost anymore and it's officially spring or summer, 
you can go buy plant starts, they call them plant starts or transplants and put them in your garden. You do not have to start everything from seed. And even though I'm a very experienced gardener, almost every year I buy tomato plant starts and peppers just because it's easy to go buy it from somebody who grew it in a greenhouse and who's really good at taking care of the baby plants. I've had baby people to take care of and I, I wanted to keep them alive first. So I let somebody else do the baby plants and, and get those and put them in your garden because you, they're more likely to have already gotten a good start on life. And sometimes when you're planting from seed, you don't really know what to look for, how long it's gonna take, am I watering it enough? But when you buy a transplant, that someone at a garden store or a nursery or a local farmer has grown, you know, you're helping them because they, they started it and it's some nice income for them. And you get to start out with a guaranteed healthy plant. And, and then your job is just to keep it being healthy and keeping it alive. Okay. So we're going to wrap this up now. Are there any other words of wisdom you want to share with the audience today? Hmm. Let me think. Well, um, I always like to be very encouraging of people. And so the other thing that I want to say before I was talking about how the trees inspire me about strength, I also love to go out and see the beautiful flowers and the other beautiful things and think also, I am just as beautiful. I'm a beautiful living creature walking through the world, walking through the flower beds or the whatever. And so one of the things that, you could try out, which is maybe a little bit out there, but whatever, try it out, see if you like it, is go out there and like drink in the beauty with your whole heart, with your eyes, with everything, and feel that you're beautiful too as you're doing it. Wonderful. Well, Rachel's information, all her contact information will be wherever you're watching this or whether, or if you're listening to it. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Rachel. Wonderful information. And I can't wait to get out in the garden. <laughs> Woo, I know. I'm excited for you, too. Thank you, Denise. Thank you for your time. If you're looking for more ways to reduce the stress in your life, please visit www.therelaxationlounge.info. Here I've got access to a free Facebook page where you can get support, information on the podcast where I interview different individuals, we share their techniques to help you reduce your stress, plus a membership that you can join where you can come and do stress reducing practice on demand anytime you need to reduce the stress in your life and create more happiness in your world. I'll see you in the lounge.